Hey, what's up everybody? My name's London Rook. Today we are working on Outlander, the St. Delin Canton, which hasn't been made yet. So, well, technically the outside has been made. So let's go ahead and take a look and see where that's at. Just for reference. Okay, so I think this one over here is St. Olm's, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this one is St. Olm's, and then so this one over here would be St. Delon. In Vivic City, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna spin this around, you can get a good idea of where we're gonna be working today. I have absolutely nothing planned for this canton. I have no idea the direction that I wanna go for it, so this will be interesting, yeah. This will be fun. Okay, so first things first, we need to create a new a template here, or a new copy of this template, and then pop that into its own cell. And we're doing it this way so that we have them aligned up specifically to the grid system, because if we don't do it that way, whenever we try and make additions to this template, and if it's not aligned up to the grid system, then it's just going to have all sorts of weird snapping issues, so, yeah. Let's see, 2300. And that's good enough for right now. Oh, wait. And then probably 2300. Okay, technically that should align up just nicely. Right? Let's double check that. Excellent, okay. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, man, I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. That fountain looks pretty damn cool. So I take it like the water and stuff is animated too, or is that just part of the regular mesh? Okay, and then this is basically a giant palette that we're going to be working off of, so... We don't need to get this thing aligned up to... Um, too crazy good. Come on. All right, there we go. Okay, and cool. And then the very last thing that I'm going to do is to take out the ceiling because it's kind of a pain in the ass to work around. And then we'll move it back. It's a litter date. Water streams are animated. That is. That is pre pretty freaking sweet. You know, you can post a link in chat if you want to, uh, to an image. So that everybody else can see what we're working on, or what you're working on. Yay, you get to watch this in mobile quality today. Only the best. All 
All right, let's get to work. Today, we are just going to be like messing around and playing around with this stuff and see what sticks. Believe it or not, this is my favorite part of modding. So it's probably going to put me in a good mood. Hope so, anyway. So, do I know how to use any game engines? Well, I've had a little bit of experience with uh, with Unity, and I've had a little bit of experience with I had um, a moderate amount of experience with Unreal. So, I'm not completely stupid when it comes to the engines that are out there. But uh, like for some of the smaller ones, like Stencil, I don't really have a ton of experience with those. I'd like to. In fact, I even have um, Game Maker installed. Well, in my Steam library, anyway. Which I've got a copy for that I probably should activate because it's... gonna expire soon, I think. But hey, whatever gets the job done, right? I am so excited right now. I'm going to be watching um, in another 24 hours or so. I'm, I'm probably not going to be streaming tomorrow because we get to go ahead and go to the theater and sit in some nice comfy leather seats and maybe have a beer. Well, I can't have beer because I'm allergic to beer, but um, have a refreshment, have a beverage. More of a rum and coke kind of guy, personally. Yeah, you know, I'm not feeling the soundtrack. I think I agree. It's a little too ambient. Hmm. I'm just wondering what the layout of this place should be. That's a very good question. Okay, so one of the things that we want to carry over from the other canton is that idea of a giant freaking statue that's in the middle of it. Which honestly, I forget what the name is. So let's let's just steal it. So this is the St. Olm's uh, canton, so it's it's right directly uh, perpendicular, yeah, mirrored, it's, it's directly mirrored off of the canton that we're going to be working on right now. But there is this element of like a giant statue in the center that I want to copy. Okay. Because honestly, it's just way too cool not to have. So we do this in a lot of cantons where we have like a hallway that extends out that looks directly out onto the centerpiece of whatever um, is in the background. I, I like the way that that works. I just don't know if we're doing it too often or not. I think what might be interesting is if we move the hallways over just a little bit, have them ticked over. 
And they might even like zigzag. I don't know. Well, we can test it and see. Like, how would that look? Okay, so it's still in the field of view here. It's just kind of split. And then we might even have this section here extended. Like, opened up a little bit. So what would that be? That would be a, a wall on this side. Hold on, let me pull up my... my reference guide here. Yeah, that'd be a three-way. You definitely have issues with clippings of your hallways. Uh, well, a good way to go ahead and get around that, in fact, the best way to get around that is to, um, where is it? Trying to pull up the preferences menu. Anyway, yeah, in your preference menu, just use the grid and then have a grid snap to, like, a unit of 32 or 64 or 256. All right, 250, actually, you think it is 256. Right, so if we have a grid snapping to 256, and of course we have the angle snap so that it's at the cardinal directions, north, east, south, west, that means you can just literally snap these things into place. I don't like using a, a grid snap this tall, or a, a, this big anyway. I like going down to about 32, but just for various reasons. But yeah, if you're working with the Velothi kit, not something like the, oh, even the, like the Telvanni stuff too. Basically anything in the game is running off of a 256 unit grid size. So if you're using a multiple of 256, then you're, you're still good to go. Okay, and then I'm thinking that we'll have this one, we're going to cheat it a little bit and have it extend out and then have a corner piece right here. That's my plan. We might even have like a hallway that connects these two places together too. I don't know if that would be useful or not though. Because I can certainly see putting in like a house or something right here. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. All right, so we want to move these ones over. And then we want to rotate this. Yeah, no, if you're just trying to eyeball it and, and do it by hand, that is damn near impossible. Grid snapping exists for a reason. I wouldn't want to work without it. At least when, um, when I'm dealing with this kit. 
when you know, you're dealing with like the Skyrim stuff and like things that are a bit more loose and a bit more advanced, then yeah, you kind of want to lay off the grid snapping. But as as far as Morrowind goes, probably a good idea if you stick with it. You know, we've been listening to the soundtrack for the past three or four streams, so I'm thinking that I might want to mix it up just a little bit. I mean, not that I don't like it. I do. But I don't want it to get old. Yeah, there we go. And then if we just rotate these by 90 degrees... We'll have like a nice little open plaza here. Ooh, that's a good question. Something's off. It's gotta be this one. So this one's a little bit tricky. We need to have a column here and then we need to have a wall here and then opposite on the other side too because we don't wanna have this column here in the center. I think I remember what that is. Yeah, it's these two. There we go. Uh, I don't know, guys. I still like the idea of having this this hallway here that frames this statue in the background. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one. I think what we might do... is just extend it back one. So this comes back here. And then we'll have the four pillars on each side. So here, 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 here. And the one in the back here too. What would that be? That would be an entrance way, right? Yeah. There we go. That's exactly what I want. What part of Vivek is this? This is inside of the St. Delon Canton. So if you're facing the... Okay, let's see. If you are in the foreign quarter, right? And you're looking down towards the, the temple, right? So the High Fang. You're looking down that uh, channel. You go past the Red Ring Canton. And you're going to hit the St. Delon Canton on the right. Wow, that is confusing. I can just show you. I'll just show you again. Okay, probably finished. Give me a second. Okay, so this is the Arena Canton, right there. Let's uh, swap out to a uh, ground view. 
All right, so this is the center, or the entrance of the city right here. This is the foreign canton. You'll notice that it has three different levels. It's bigger than any other canton inside of Vivek. It's a little pretty and such. This here is the Redoran Canton, which I was talking about earlier. And then if we keep going forward, right before you hit the High Fane, this is the St. Delon Canton. So it's this piece right here. I know it's kind of hard to tell because they're all they all look the same from a distance. But yeah, this is where I'm working at right now. Man, that looks fantastic. You know where I'm gonna wanna you know where I want to put these? I think these would look great underneath the temple canton itself. Hell, these things would look great on top of the... I, I like these even better than the fountains that I made. To be quite honest. They feel a lot more um, in keeping with the rest of the, the Temple Canton itself. Come on, where are you? Right, so I made some can uh, fountains myself. And they're okay looking, they're fine, whatever. In fact, I like them a lot, but I don't know if they, I, they never really fit, they never really gelled with. Um, the High Fane and the rest of the Velothi stuff. That makes me really tempted to replace them with the ones that you just made. No, just a thought. I have to. I have to keep that in the back of my mind. Can't send me the files because I'm offline at Discord. Yeah, I mean, I thought you could. Okay. Well, moving on. Moving on. Let's get back to work. Yeah, right now, a lot of this is just determining how the layout of the canton is going to flow. Okay, so we want an open space in the center. That means we just need to extend those two entrances forward, and then we need a four-piece here? Three-piece. We need a three-piece there. No, come on. I know that we have a three-way somewhere. Three-way two, I believe, right? Yeah. I promise this thing is going to get a lot less dry once we start working on the buildings and stuff on the center. It's just we need to get this entranceway fixed first. Okay, what's going on here? Are we good on all these? Yeah. All right, one last thing we need to, we're actually doing. No, that's good. We want the barrier here. That's fine. We just need to get this aligned up now. I mean, technically what we had before was fine. It worked, whatever. But 
but it was a little bit too generic. Like it's the same thing that we've been using everywhere else, so. It should be similar, it shouldn't be that predictable. If that makes sense. Come on, come on, there you go. Yeah, isn't it fantastic? I love what he did with the with the fountain. I want to go in game and see how that looks with like the sound effects and everything and That's going to be great. Well done, man. No, I need the Telvani trade floor, don't I? Okay, so this here is the Telvani trade floor, by the way. Just a quick peek of like a direction that we potentially could go. But the reason why I'm in the cell is because I wanna steal a pallet. Which I don't see anywhere. That's not cool. All right, um, where were we working in before? The arena one? Arena. If you're curious about the, the index that I've been using, like this thing right here, that is actually a, a series of images that I've been working on. You can find the link down below in the description. There should be a, a button down there. Might be below, might be, um, to the right side depending on what version of Twitch you're using but yeah there's a link that brings you to a, a what is it a Flickr gallery page an album that's what they call them and it has like a bunch of stuff that is laid out and knolled and diagrammed and pretty and stuff yeah I've been working on that for, for a while there's about 60 pages I want to say okay I need this I need this down here I definitely need these. And I probably need these. In case you're curious what I'm doing right now, I'm just getting the tools ready and set up inside of this cell so I don't have to use the object window over here to try and find stuff. So yeah, that did take a little bit of time to uh, look up, but now I don't have to remember what all of these names are. I can just go ahead and go like, um, I need a piece that looks like this. Boom, done. It is a much, much faster way to work. Of course, it means that you need to set them out first. Right, you need to set up all that stuff in the beginning, but once you do, it becomes less of a problem. Like you can use it over and over and over and over again. 
three and four. And then trying to fit it visually. I mean, there's plenty of ways that you can go ahead and approach that problem, but the the naming conventions that Bethesda has for especially the Falothi kit, the one that I'm working in right now, is just all over the place. So I don't generally like using their um using their stuff. One of the things that has me a little bit curious is I don't know if there's a way to set the default um, color scheme inside of Windows 10 or Windows 8. Like, I'm still on Windows 7, and that's probably for the better because I'm using kind of a legacy piece of software here. Okay, one, two, three, and four. One, two... Oh, wow. Okay. A lot of this kit that I'm working with right now, I specifically made for the Cantons themselves, so I don't know if they're going to have a lot of versatility elsewhere, but, you know, since these things are going to be in 10 different cells... Four... No, I want to keep it sort of patterned back here. I don't know why, I just kind of want to do. Oh, I did not just do that. <laughs> oh, hell. You guys are going to laugh at what I just did. This is the damn template. This isn't the cell that I was working in before. Okay, that's fine. You know what? You know what? That's okay. It is not the end of the world. I was like, you know what? Where is the entrance that I was just working on? This doesn't make any sense. It's going to be one of these streams, isn't it? Okay, come on. I need to have a clear line of sight here. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to take this, copy it, and then paste it into the cell that we should have been working on to begin with. That's the idea anyway. Come on. Cooperate. Ugh, you're driving me crazy. You know, that just is probably going to be too much of a pain in the ass. Well, it's, it'll take maybe like two minutes to do. It's fine. Whatever.
At least we know what the overall structure is supposed to be now. Can't believe I did that. That's so... My mind is just wandering today, I swear. So, let me ask you guys this. All of you who are in the competition right now, how's it going? What are you working on right now? I know it's a bunch of house mods, but do you have anything to share? It must be pretty exciting. You know, what might be interesting here is we have pieces, you know, that go inwards. And in fact, I am going to go back over to... Right. The template, because that's where I put my palettes. And we're just going to copy these. Yeah. And then paste them into the tree floor. I think this might be one of my longer streams. Just because we have a lot of work to do. I'm thinking it might be kind of interesting to have like a bit of a wing here. Like almost a little antechamber. Okay, we got a little bit of Z fighting right here, but that's that's minimal. And then we could have this sort of Seed back. Like, that is kind of an interesting effect. And then we might have water coming in from these uh, locations. Like some sort of aqueduct. Ah, I don't know how nice that actually looks. Might need to bring it back some. Right here. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. What happens if we bring it back even more? No, I like the triangular bit. That's good. House mod is going like this. Oh dear. What are we looking at? Interesting. I like the I like the mushrooms. Are you gonna go for like a Telvani thing? I see what you're doing here. This is like a Velothi stuff here, and then you look out onto the scene that has all of this cool stuff that's in the background. That's neat. I like it. It's like a smaller scale version of what we're doing right now. Something that you might want to try doing is putting some dark lights in the back here. Might really have this, uh... I should say this. These rocks are going to have a lot of, um... They're going to carry a lot of light information just because of the size of them, right? They're pretty big. And so if you have dark lights that are 64 or maybe like 128 that are in the background, it's going to increase the saturation of the color without actually bleeding into uh, the lighting that's where your character is going to be walking around. That thing, and I would suggest putting in maybe a little blue light right here to really make this waterfall pop. That's cool though, I like it. It's good stuff. I also like the... Um, what is this, the moss that's coming in from the ceiling? 
Here's the thing that's kind of interesting with these pieces. You want to spend less time focused on what's down below on the plane and more what's like back here. Right? So less detail here, more detail here. It's just how it's due to the fact that that wall, that retaining wall is pretty high. So the things that you are going to be seeing in the background are going to um, be at a higher distance and height. It's cool though, I like it. It's good stuff. I think that's really going to pop when you put some lights into it. With something like that, I might even consider, uh, how do you say this? Taking down the ambient light that's in the scene. So like when you're walking around, make that a little bit darker than you usually would because the stuff that's inside of the house or, or the structure that you're in is going to be naturally competing against things that are in the background. So if you can make the foreground look a little bit more dark and more, um, less detailed, then the things in the background are naturally going to pop out more. Does that make sense? We need a piece that is three, I think, right? One, two, and three. I mean, technically we could do this another way, but... I think what I want to do... to do it like this. No, I want it to almost be buttressed up against this thing. If you're setting up a background scene that you know the player can't get into, don't be afraid to do all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise do inside of that scene, right? Like, um, I mean, this might not be 100% applicable to you um, for that particular place, but maybe you can do something with it. And that's the thought that you don't really need to have walkable places passable places that a player could technically walk from point A to point B, so long as it looks like a player could walk from point A to point B. So here's my idea. We'll have some like waterfalls or something coming in from this section down here onto a pond. Then that pond is going to kind of stair step down and sort of bifurcate this this cell into two different parts. So there'll be a stream like exactly where it's at right now. We'll probably tweak it a little bit. And then the water is going to come in from these uh, different wings. That's the idea.
Yeah, we're gonna have to create some new parts, aren't we? That is not pretty at all. All right, well, it's good enough for right now. We'll fix it. In fact, you know, we might even do something a little bit, um, we might cheat a little bit. It'd be very, very easy to do something like this. And nobody's the wiser. I love it. When in doubt, just cheat. Frankly, I don't think that they look that great right now. But I bet you that once we start putting the detailing in, that's going to um it's gonna look really cool. That's my suspicion anyway. Because I don't particularly like what the angles are of that are doing right now. But we'll put in some columns, we'll put in some extra detailing, extra little bit of finesse, and it's gonna look great. We might even play around with the lighting a little bit here too, I think. So let me pull up. I wish there was a way that I could set up default lighting in a cell so I don't have to do this like 6,000 times. Okay, so better lighting. And now let's start popping some stuff into this thing.
Okay. It's good. Hmm. I'm missing one. Hey, what's up, man? I'm I'm pretty good. Just kind of zoning out right now as I make this new um new Canton. What are you up to? I actually wonder if it's possible to have objects enable slash disable depending on the date of a person's computer through a script. Ooh, um, I I think you can do it through a game date. I don't know. You would have to ask Greatness Seven that one. That is a little bit beyond me. Yo, Greatness, are you in chat right now? Ah, whatever. He's probably on Discord right now. If anybody could do it, he could. It would be pretty cool to like have Christmas trees or something only appear on Christmas Day. I mean, not that Vardenfell has Christmas, but... Doesn't even have a December. Okay, so we need to have these thingies. It's dependent on the date, yeah, but that... Uh... <laughs> That's Fallout 4. That is a good 14 years later. I mean, Papyrus went through a lot of different generations. A lot of different incarnations. I don't know. I mean, it would be interesting. It would certainly be cool.
No, there's got to be a better way that we can do this. This looks like ass right now. National Cliff Racer Day. Oh god, the carnage. Okay, that's a little bit better. Probably be even better if we did something like that. Ah, uh, let me think here. Okay, there is another piece that we could use, potentially. I don't know, it doesn't really convey the fact that there is there's water that's being channeled through this thing. I think the the proportions are wrong. Hmm. Let me think about this for a second. Because I do like this little piece right here. What I'm thinking is we'll have this elevated. And then we might even have it sticking out a little bit, too. So if we're going to have it elevated, that means that we need to have some sort of pillar or something. Some sort of um, strut. Alright, let's see. Even made-up holidays, yeah. I could see there being a lot of potential for that, I really could. I mean, Autoclock has always told me that I needed to place more uh, pipes inside of this city, so... I don't know, maybe he's right. Like the only problem here is that I I need those pipes to be shown as they go back. Like is there a way that I can shrink these things down? Uh yes, okay, cool. If they're smaller like this, then that means they need to be closer together. So here's what I'm thinking. We might have a platform that comes out a little bit. Like this.
And then it sort of recedes like this. I don't know, what would some made up um, Morrowind holiday holidays be? I imagine there would be like some sort of harvest festival, because there usually is in these cultures. Okay, what if we had a sort of Mickey Mouse in here? Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind, and I don't know what this says about me, is an Outlander Purge Day. Uh, I could see that actually happening. Okay, well, at least it's looking a little bit more, um... Halloween, Kajit giving out moon sugar to all the kids. I could see it. Immersive holidays. Well, it certainly looks different. I don't know if that's good or not. Okay, let's let's try it a different tact. Let's try a different tact. What if this up here is just some sort of ornamental thing? Or hell, it might even have a waterfall that like comes down, right? Might even be carrying water, but it, the waterfall actually comes down, hits this spot, and then it sort of gets stair-stepped again. Right, so the water isn't technically up here anymore, it's it's in the back, held up by these tanks, then gets dropped down, and then comes forward. Ugh. Oh, this is a pain in the butt, isn't it? Plus, there's the fact that it doesn't look very velocity at the moment. Alright, let's think this through. How can we make this look more velocity?
I think we might need to like ditch the entire concept, but I really don't want to because we spent so much time on it. Okay, let's think this through. Let's put some ribbing on here. You know, I think part of the problem here is that it's just, it's too damn high. Like visually and otherwise, it, it literally could not exist like this if it wants to go back further into the, uh, into the distance. Come on, where are you? Yeah, nothing that I'm trying right here is working, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to stick a pin in that. We'll come back to it later, and I want to go ahead and work on the rest of the city because that is probably going to be more important. And then we'll figure this out at some other point, like once, I, once I've had some time to think about this because it's just... I literally could spend hours on that trying to get that to work. It's a pity, too, because I like the idea. I like the concept. I think we're going to continue forward with this whole stream idea. It's kind of going in between these two sections, and then... Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens over there. You're actually going to ask greatness about the holiday stuff? Hmm. You should. I could um, kill that guar. Those boots are ruined. Not to give anybody bad ideas or anything, but um, that's the kind of question that if you ask somebody, like if you <laughs> if you ask greatness seven, he will stop everything that he's doing, and he'll try and go ahead and solve it then and there. So I mean if you're if you're on this team, maybe not the most opportune time to ask him. That's all I'm saying. Might want to wait until after uh, December's over. Just a thought. Feel free to ignore. Oh hey greatness, how's it going, man? We're just talking about you. Were your ears burning? Speak of the devil and he shall appear. 
Yeah, so I spent the, like the last 20 or 30 minutes trying to get this damn corridor to work over here and it's it looks like ass. Uh so I'm I've given up on that for the moment. I'm gonna sleep on it and then probably come back and do something completely different, but we'll see. In case any of you guys are wondering right now what the hell I'm doing, I'm just randomizing the terrain a little bit so that when we put the buildings and the city in, uh, the buildings are going to be at different heights and it's just going to give us a little bit of... It, it makes it easier to go ahead and extrapolate how the city would naturally develop, is what I'm trying to say. Right, if the ground isn't 100% level. Oh, with the date in-game, yeah, sure. That's fine. I thought you meant like the date on the computer. Hang tight just a second, guys. Besides, it would make more sense if it was in-game, too. I mean, just because something's Christmas in real life doesn't mean that it's Christmas in Fallout 4 or whatever. Okay. So, we need to create a, a sort of a new architectural style with out of these things right here. And I'm thinking that it might be based off of these towers there. We might have this thing sort of repeat over and over again. There are, like, a lot of Skyrim Christmas mods out there. Yeah, I want it to kind of be based off of this thing here.
We might change up the various scale of these things too. So that it's not 100% identical. Right, but I wanted that sort of triangular thing to, um, to repeat. this down here. And then I'm thinking that we're going to put in a ton of windows to sell the idea that these are like huge. Yeah, let's play with that for a little bit. I want these things to look very distinct, very, very different. Almost like little skyscrapers. That's a oxymoron. Little skyscrapers, but you get the idea. That's a bit of a challenge. Okay.
Yeah, okay. More like a tryptophobia nightmare. What is this thing like freaking you out right here? It's hilarious. We should have more. What would really be gross is if we randomized it a little bit and then had them wiggling or something. Wriggling. I don't know, I'm just trying to do something that I haven't done before. Seeing what sticks. I have those backwards, don't I? Yeah, there we go. Jokes aside, those windows look like bug eyes. You know, that's not necessarily a bad thing.
That is a weird looking building. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. I really like this. I, I mean, I like the design. It's 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 easy enough to um, silhouette, especially when we have like seven or eight of these things inside of this um, inside of this location. But there's just something off about it. Okay, that's what it is. The base needs to be a little bit wider. Gotcha. streaming anyway that's a good question does anybody want to check that for me my goal today is to get this entire um entire complex roughed out So now that we have an idea of the direction we want to go for the buildings, it should go by pretty quickly. Okay, so one and a half hours. I bet you this is going to take about another hour to do. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Sort of like the entrance.
Yeah, we'll need to fix it somehow. It's a good direction, though. Okay.
What am I listening to? Okay. Do I not have one of those? Um, okay. You know what? Let me do it this way. Okay, that looks better. Thank you. 
I feel like if we're going to have a giant building like this, I would like to have like a building over here and then a building over here. And then maybe it leads into a courtyard or something. And then we'll have a pathway that goes between these two into something that's a little bit more open here. Good on that? Excellent. Actually, that's way too wide. Be nice if there was like something that was in between those two kits. All right, let's try something like this for the moment, and then we'll come back. Yeah, we might even have this extend out a second time. Come on. Oh, you know what? That'll work. Okay, coming along. I 
Yeah, in case you guys are wondering, I am trying to keep the same architectural style here. So I've created little rules in my head for how I want to approach this. Like, um, when you have these wings on the left and the right hand side, then that's directly below this green strip is going to be the cluster of, uh, uh, cluster of windows. Secondly, I've got this thing, this little motif here of, uh, of verticality with where we're placing the windows as they go up um, in the center place. And then third, I have these little wings on both sides, just to give it a little bit more of a, of a wideness at its base. The cool thing about having rules like these is that, well, you get to break them. Right? You get to follow them. I mean, you, you know what the rules are. Then, if you know what the rules are, then you can go ahead and cheat a little bit and do like sort of unexpected things as we build more and more of these things. You'll notice too that like all of them are pretty symmetrical as well. So I'm thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if we had a building like this that? wasn't symmetrical, but also kept in the same rules. That might be interesting. And then hopefully by the time that we have seven or eight of these things, it's all going to look like it's part of the same society. It's the variation that makes things interesting.
It's good though. I think we're making some pretty good time here. I mean, apart from this thing over here, which took forever. This little water feature, which, yeah, I have no idea. Doesn't really fit with anything else here. I mean, it was a good idea, but we're probably gonna have to abandon it. This looks a little off-centered to me, because it is. Come on, come on. There we go. We might even have this... Sort of do this number. Nah. I do like them when they're a little bit more spaced out, though. That looks pretty good. Okay, moving on to the next one. Actually, we need to put the door in there, don't we? doesn't look right to me for some reason. What's going on? Okay. I think what's really going to help this out is if we put in some more of these gardens. Because that's the other big thing, too. This place is going to be very green. be interesting to have some like elevated gardens too maybe it actually comes out of the foundation here just a skosh Yeah, we need some proper lighting there.
I don't know why, but it kind of sounds like a riff from um, Batman Beyond. You know, I actually haven't seen Goonzy or SimSim Sim or Dark Fox or any of the non Morrowind modders around. I wonder what they're up to. I like it. I don't know. Um, I think it should like lead to something. Yeah, there we go. That balances it out a little bit more. So we'll put a door here. We're not going to put a door over here. Hey, what's up, man? I'm actually being really quiet this stream because I'm I'm trying to concentrate on uh, this new Canton that we're working on right now. I'd like to get all of it filled out. Let me give you an idea of what it's going to look like when we're done. You've been watching me through Dark Fox's channel since the auto-host stream? Awesome! I'm a huge fan of Dark Fox. In fact, I kind of lurk on his streams a ton, too. So, this is uh, the Telvani Canton. It's a pretty good idea of what this thing is going to look like once we're done. Obviously, it's not going to have the giant tower in the center of it because, um, well, it's a different location. But it should give you some idea of what this place might look like once it's fully lit and detailed and stuff. Let me show you what it's going to look like on the outside. Uh, not that. <laughs> oh, let me show you what it's going to look like. Blank screen. Okay, this is a little bit better. Come on, come on, come on. Sometimes the CS doesn't cooperate, especially with these larger cells. You always just have his Twitch channel open. Fair enough. You know, I try and catch him in the mornings, but... You know, I do like to sleep through them. So this is the Vivicantons themselves. We're inside of Morrowind, by the way, in case you didn't catch that. And the one that we're working on right now is this one on the right-hand side. Right here. I've always liked this city. I really have. 
But the problem uh, in the vanilla game is that there wasn't really a lot of scale to it. Like, especially when you went inside, it felt really closed in. It didn't really give that sense that this is a grand capital or something. Even though this is, like, miles bigger than anything in Skyrim. As far as I know. Solitude has about 80 NPCs all said and done, and that's including the guards and stuff. I believe Vivek has close to about 140. And that's before we actually put in, like, our own stamp on things, so... When you finish, you might just have to buy it. Well, I mean, it comes at a pretty good price. Don't think you can beat free. So, uh, we're trying to decide on what kind of architectural style these buildings should technically have inside of um inside of the St. Delon trade floor because I want each location to sort of I mean it's using the same pieces but it should be mixed and matched in different ways. I think we're sort of pulling it off right now. I don't know I mean how well it's gonna work out in the end. But that's part of the fun, right? Yeah, no paid mods here, just a uh, Just what you see, man. This game was two generations before Skyrim, so this is the Elder Scrolls 3, not the Elder Scrolls 5. But you 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 would be surprised at like how far you can actually pull the graphics and stuff because it's just using the same engine. Sort of. Right, they tweaked it all the hell, but it's it's the same engine. Ah, uh, you meant the game, yeah. I think it's on sale right now, or at least it should be relatively soon because of the winter sale on Steam. You can pick up a copy for uh what, six bucks? Ten if you don't want to wait. Yeah, man, I've been working on this thing for quite some time. Like, Dark Fox has been beat, though. Dark Fox has been working on... Or has worked on Corinthia Tower for three years, off and on. I am just crossing the two-year mark myself, so... As usual, he has me beat. That's cool, though. Ten dollars and looks uh, ten dollars American, I think. I don't know. Is it is it on Good Old Games? I think it actually might be. Maybe somebody else from Chat can um, illuminate. Yo, greatness! He's still around. How much does Morrowind actually cost? If you recall correctly, Bethesda pulled their stuff from... Really? That's not nice. How very lame. Okay, you know what? Enough of this track. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get a little hungry myself, so I might pop off a stream here in, in a little bit. But I want to go ahead and come back later on today and finish this thing out. Because literally, this is the last canton that we have to do. How crazy is that? And then of course we have to come back and like tweak them a bit so that there's no gaps and so doors link up and, and all that jazz. But as far as like the meat and potatoes of the environment design goes, yeah, it's it's 
pretty close to done. It's nuts. I would be kind of surprised if it didn't go on sale, though. I mean, it usually does. Then again, it's not like you're buying a bad game, so... People routinely stick thousands of hours into this thing, so... I don't think they would do that if they hated it. Although, then again, Dodo. I should say League. That's kind of cool. It's like a crossroads. I wonder if we can... Might want to just ditch these all together. Yeah, you can get it for like five dollars when the Steam sale this comes up. Isn't the Steam sale like currently going on right now though? I think it is. By the way, if any of you guys are looking for a casual game that you want to try, let me go ahead and plug um game called, I think it's Outland? Badland. Yeah, Badland. Right now, it's like $3 on Steam. It's fantastic. I have it on my iPad. I don't want to give too much away. I mean, there's not really much of a plot there, but it's one of the most inventive platformers that I have ever seen. Definitely worth the two bucks. So, I mean, if you have a little bit of money to burn, you could go ahead and try it out. And the sound design is just freaking amazing. Wanting to buy a game just because someone's making a good mod for it? You might not even like the game. No sale for Morrowind. Jeez, Morrowind Game of the Year Edition is $20 on Steam? I mean, I would say it's worth 20 bucks, but... Then again, I'm kind of a fanboy when it comes to, to Morrowind. I didn't even spend twenty dollars for freaking Skyrim. I spent like seven. Oh, fifteen typo. Yeah, if you don't like the game, just look at use it to look around the mod. That's you know it's funny. That's exactly why I bought Elder Scrolls Online. I don't really have that much interest in an MMO. I mean, even though it's an Elder Scrolls MMO, whatever, it's fine. I guess it's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm sure somebody out there likes it. But... Being able to take a look at the models and the screenshots and, and the lore and stuff, firsthand. Being able to take a look at the environments. That was worth about, I don't know, seven or eight bucks to me. Especially if I'm making a moral in mod. I want things to sort of fit with the other games. Whenever possible, anyway. 
keep it kind of lore friendly. Ooh, that's cool. I'm liking how this is shaping up. This looks very velocity to me, and at the same time, it looks very different than anything else that we've done before. I think we need to tweak the architectural style just a little bit, but I'm liking that it looks different. And that is like the number one thing that I am trying to go for at the moment. Yeah, but even if you just look around ESO, it's not worth the price. Yeah. The thing that gets me about ESO more than anything else, honestly, is the fact that the game is so large and it updates so often, my crappy internet just cannot keep up with it. What is it, like 50 gigs now? 75? But your mod seems to be worth it just to look around and explore in it. Well, I hope you like it. I do. Put a lot of love into this thing. So it would be nice if, you know, people appreciated it, but at the end of the day, who knows? Just trying to do my best here. It's all you can do, right? Okay, that's cool. Like this. This is cool. And then I want to have that sort of terminate here. So when you're looking out at this, it sort of frames it, but at the same time, isn't completely symmetrical here. We might even have this scooched back a bit. Right. And then we'll have a series of these things going back. It's funny, I'm so sloppy when it comes to the first pass. Second pass, I'm just like, I'm, I'm obsessive about these things, but first pass, I don't care. I just, I, I need them somewhere close to reasonable. So the idea behind this is I want the larger buildings here to sort of mirror these smaller little uh, pilings that we have all over the place. Ooh, that's a good question. That's a, uh, not a... Not a good question. That is a good thought. We have a section here. Of walls. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's a lot of ESO hate out there. Um, I certainly don't think it's the worst game that I've ever seen. That is my ringing endorsement of ESO. But I think it's the game that nobody really wanted. <laughs> it sounds a little bit harsh, but at the end of the day, it's probably true. Like everybody was asking for a multiplayer, or at least a co-op, Elder Scrolls title, but nobody was asking for an Elder Scrolls MMO, except maybe Zenimax, who wanted money. Which, you know, like, they're a company, of course they're gonna want money.
trying to take on WoW. Which is a little bit ironic because when you really stop and think about it, what has Blizzard been moving towards? They've been moving away from like MMOs and they've been moving towards the more casual I don't even know if casual is the right casual slash competitive accessible They're, they've been moving towards more accessible titles right so things like Overwatch things like uh, Hearthstone Heroes of the Swarm Heroes of the Swarm Heroes of the Storm there you go I was thinking Heart of the Swarm there for a second I don't know, like whenever you do a prequel too, it's going to tick off a lot of people. It really is. Because any time that you try and introduce anything into the lore that goes against convention, it just sends the wrong signal. You're excited to see where the open uh, MW multiplayer mod goes. Yeah, that's certainly something to keep your eye on. Honestly, I couldn't say one way or the other if how well that mod is doing. Okay, something is weird here. That's what it is. I think we might want to increase the size of these just a smidge. And then this one here will fit nicely inside. Doesn't line up for the lore for the Warcraft game. Let me ask you this, man. What did you think about the movie? I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm not really that huge into WoW lore at all. So, like, base judge on the just on the merits of it as a film. Is it a good film? Is it a good picture? Picture. Is it a good movie? God, it sounds so pretentious when I say picture. It's like I'm living in L.A. or something. guy who's making it and he added it on Steam was kind of weird. Well, I mean, for the longest time, I was only on Steam. And I moved over to Discord not too long ago. Ooh, that does look better. I don't know why that looks better, but it does. Maybe just a little bit of margin there.
Or living in the past where it was called moving picture. Yes, one of the talkies. Jeez. I don't even know. Okay, I like the, the large buildings that we have here. I think what we need to do is to put in some smaller ones to sort of balance it out. What we want to avoid is this right here. Well, I don't know if we want to avoid it for this pipe. Because it's kind of a unique thing. But as far as the buildings go, we do not want to have any curves. It should all be angles. Except for like the chimneys. Those are fine. Right, so basically these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones, and... Uh, potentially we could keep that one here. We'll just take those off of our palette. Get rid of these ones too, just so that we're not tempted to use these things. Wow, there is not a lot there left. Okay, this will be a challenge. <laughs> Okay, okay. We'll, we'll try and make it work. We'll try and make it work. So what has Dark Fox been up to anyway? Last I heard he was working on a project called Modularity. But I don't really know any of the specifics behind it, other than he wants to do faster turnarounds. That is basically all the info that I know. Which, believe me, I can completely relate to. I don't know, I would have thought that after all of that effort and time and energy put into Corinthia Tower and his other mods, that he would have moved on from modding and he would have he picked up Unreal or another engine to work with. He just must love Skyrim to hell. Which, if he does, more power to him. He's doing PM and updates for CTR. Uh, what's PM? Because I'm thinking like private message. Project modularity, gotcha. At the moment, he's making a hearthfire house. Cool. Like, he's remaking one of the hearthfire houses that, like, came with the game, or is he... building one in one of those styles? Like in the DLC? But better. Oh lord, that means that we're not going to see him for another... <laughs> it's never going to get released. Oh no, I shouldn't say that. CCR got released. He actually releases stuff. I don't. Uh, well, more power to him. As I said. He's making the new one and the house creation part is more immersive. Does that mean like sweeping up cobwebs and stuff?
I wonder what it would be like if he decided to make a a dungeon or something. Because he's most known for the house mods that he's done. For some reason, when I think of Skyrim, I think of house mods. I mean, that could just be because of Eleonora. With Morrowind, it's a little bit more diverse. Like, you don't see as many house mods, but you do see a lot more quest mods. Yeah, we want to make the smaller bits here. By the way, me making smaller houses is not me being lazy. There actually is a really good reason for that. When you do large stuff over and over and over and over again, and this is a problem with vanilla Vivic as a whole, you don't really get the sense of scale. You need to have things that are smaller next to things that are larger so that it reads as if these things are bigger than they or so that it reads as if these things are the proper scale like you have to clear the area where it's being built you have to go to the lumberjack mill and buy the wood only used to do house mods only recently started expanding and doing other stuff so glad you learned how to model Yeah, it actually is quite useful. Hey, look at that. It's actually starting to come together. I think in this location, we're not going to have a single dome. Right, we do domes in the other places, and they look beautiful. They really do, but in order to have this thing be a bit differentiated... No domes. That's another rule that I'm putting in. It's so funny, we have such bad Z fighting on a couple of these models. We'll fix it, don't worry. It's on the list. Which you can have it delivered or haul yourself on a carriage. You know, I like the idea. I really do. I, I, I think that is a wonderful way to approach a game. And I know that he is going to put in a way where you can just do it easily like you would normally do inside of the vanilla game. So I'm going to give him props for that. I just, I, I, I know for a fact he's going to do that. But... When you include those kinds of systems into the game, for me anyway, it always feels a little bit odd. Right? Like, oh, this is a completely different thing from vanilla. Right? It doesn't it doesn't quite mesh right, it doesn't quite fit right. I, I, I'm not describing myself very well. If there is a pre-established method of doing something in the game, 
right? Like chopping wood. If chopping wood gives you infinite wood, and that's everywhere in Skyrim, then even if you have like 50 wood in your pack, it still doesn't count towards building something. You have to go down to the river and buy it directly from a dude who's selling it from a mill. That feels a little bit weird, you know? So I like that Dark Fox does have those options most of the time in most of its mods, where you can do it like one of two ways. I remember he got annoyed and dummy proofed to CTR. Well, he's still working on the thing, right? Like, he might be doing Project Modularity right now, but he's still pumping out content for that. Last I heard, he was working on a. What was it? A beer making station? Because people were complaining about most of the good stuff wasn't shoved in your face. Well, hey man, like, if he... You can only really do things to your taste. And then on top of that, provide the options available, like... So that people can play the way that they want to play. Which is, since we don't have an MCM inside of Morrowind, it means that when I actually go and do the crafting stations and stuff, because Morrowind doesn't have crafting, excuse me. When I do the crafting stations, it means that I need to have those in separate mods, right? So this Outlander will be the ESM, and then, I don't know, wood crafting or something would be in an ESP. And that's specifically due to the fact that it, if I was to inst have that inside of the ESM itself, then everybody would have to have woodcrafting in the game, and that might not be something that everybody wants. So I get that. I do. Even then, though, I absolutely know that people are going to complain about it some, for some reason or another. I, I already have complaints about the fact that I have a Malachite Forge inside of the game right now. It's like, no, I should be a Glass Forge. It shouldn't even exist. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. Whatever. I mean, yes, technically they're right, but... It's like a two second fix if you want to like mod that out of your game. Yeah, making stuff modular is a good idea. That's the that's the plan anyway. Greatness was telling you the plans for having crafting for like weapons and armor and stuff in Outlander. You're really excited for it. Yeah. I I am too. Um, the one thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that, and I don't know if Greatness is still here, but I don't want to dog on you too much. We need to keep the system restrained. We need to keep it simple, we need to keep it accessible. And then we can go ahead and do like all the sorts of other cool stuff that we want to. But as far as the system is concerned, since we're doing so many different crafting systems out there, Simpler's probably better. And there's this... Um, there's this line of thinking that says just because you can go ahead and make something complex that complexity is quote unquote deep and so if it's deep then it's better and that's not always necessarily true right there's already a crafting system inside a Morrowind, inside of a Morrowind mod out there, but it's a little bit too inaccessible and it's a little bit too complex for my taste. If we're gonna do crafting inside a Morrowind, it should model itself after relatively closely, the Skyrim one, the Skyrim model, because 
crafting in Skyrim is actually pretty good and is pretty accessible. And if we want Skyrim players to pick it up and play with it and stuff and actually use the system, then it probably should be relatively similar to it. I mean, I'm one of those people who actually think that crafting was done pretty damn well inside of Skyrim, especially for today. Yeah, I feel like Skyrim did a great job with the crafting system. One of the things about the game that isn't bad at all. I'm not saying that we should copy it one to one, but I'm saying it would be a really good guideline. Really good standard to um, try and reach towards. And then, you know, when we build a system that is similar to Skyrim's, that's going to make it easier for us to see the flaws of that system and then improve on it. Like, all of that R&D stuff was already done. Has already been done. It would be kind of... Uh, I don't know if unwise is the right word. That's the one. That's, it's what I'm going to use. It, it will be kind of unwise to like ignore all that stuff and try and build everything from scratch again. I mean, just because it's unique doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Okay, that's coming together. And you'll notice that this is feels like already a lot different than the last canton that we worked on. So let me pull that one up and I can show you. So the mod Morrowind Crafting, technically, with a little bit of tweaking, you could use the tables that are inside of Outlander to run that mod, right? It wouldn't take a lot of time to get those two things to work together and to make them nice and compatible as it stands right now. And that's why we're doing it in a modular fashion so that if, some, if the creators of Morrowind Crafting or whoever in the future want to make their own crafting system they can that said we're going to release an official quote unquote version of the crafting system that officially goes with outlander but yeah you can you can totally see that this place right here has a totally different vibe than the last one Everything's at weird angles, everything kind of disjointed. There isn't a lot of harmony here. It's all dark and moody. Whoa, what happened? Which I love for the Arena Canton. I think this is great. Um, the only thing I might change is I might make it a little bit less red. Might cool it down just about a couple hues but if we go back to um, St. Delon actually this is zero zero wasn't it it's a lot more orderly it's a lot more serene there is a method to the madness here. 
Which do you guys prefer, Skyrim original crafting UI or with the UI extensions? Oh, definitely with um, Sky UI. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we can't make a Sky UI type of interface, but we can sort of cheat and use the Alchemy interface for Sky or for Morrowind crafting. So just let me reiterate. We can use the Alchemy interface and mod that so that it works with the Outlander Morrowind crafting system. Yes, okay. You prefer without, in your opinion. Really? You think you can... Is that just because you're using a controller, or... Is that just what you're used to? I will say that I like, on the whole, the Skyrim interface a lot. Even the vanilla interface is, is pretty damn good. But you can tell that it was designed first and foremost for controllers. I like the fact that it's minimal and then it gets out of your way and iHUD is the perfect interface mod. It, if it's not perfect, it's pretty damn close. Because that's exactly what it should do. It just your menus and stuff should get out of the way when you're not using them. I don't understand why Bethesda doesn't do that. Well, yeah, I do, because it would be confusing for um, console players. Even though it is a better experience, it's not as accessible, and so that's probably why they keep those those menus up, but still, I mean, there should be a button or something that you can press inside of the menu system that makes things immersive. Oh well, so long as Gopher still around him. I'm sure um, it'll come out one way or another, depending on the iteration. It's one of those things where you once go it's one of those things where once you go Sky UI, you never go back. Makes me wonder if someone made a mod like that from Morrowind. As far as I've seen, they haven't. Technically you could, but every time that I have tried to install a UI mod onto Morrowind, and it's just, it could be the author, it's it's just not agreed with MWE, I see. MW Morrowind's Graphics Extender Extended Edition, MGEXE. Okay, so this is pretty much how I want this place laid out. We're going to do the cluttering and stuff tomorrow, I think. The one last bit that we have to do is this section in the back here. And I think I'm going to hold off on that until next stream. Or I might go ahead and do that um, after I close the stream. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for me today, guys. Let's stick a little bit more lighting on here and then... That's going to do it. Tomorrow we're going to stick in the trees and we are going to f like put in all the foliage and clutter and stuff. But yeah, this is a this is a pretty good start. I like it. Not bad for 2 hours of time. 3 hours. Not bad for 3 hours. Well, hey, if you liked what you saw here, and you want to go ahead and check out some of the other stuff that I've been up to. Totally can. We have videos on demand on Twitch. Also, if you want to get notified of when I am going to be streaming next, you can follow me here on Twitch, or we have a Discord, a Twitter, and a Steam group. So, take your pick. As for me, I'm going to be hanging out on Discord for a little bit longer after the stream. So, yeah. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>